got women, you got women on your mind. Sister out there in left field, naked. Bend your knees and keep your head down. You got it. <laughs> Who's the dead guy? Kirk, is that your grandpa? What do you know about baseball, old man? What do I know about baseball? Heck, I invented baseball. Abner, double pay at your service. I played before this fancy foolery you whippersnappers call baseball. Now listen to me and watch what happens. Wow! What the heck? Danger. Who is this guy? Let me teach you about the sport I love. Baseball. I invented baseball in 1839. It was summer and there wasn't much else to do up in the old Cooperstown, New York. It started out as just my boys and me. Pretty soon, every day, everybody was playing ball. It wasn't just us Americans either. During the Civil War, it went to the South. Then it got picked up by Cuba, Puerto Rico, and the other islands in the Caribbean. In World War II, Japan picked it up. It started with just a couple of Yankees? You betcha. Oh, All the greats played today, though. Boy, you're darn near giving me a heart attack. <clears throat> the 20s saw the careers of Lou Gehrig, Rogers Hornsby, Grover Cle Cleveland Alexander, George Sisler, Tris Beaker, and Pie Trainer. Not to mention the greatest player of all time, George Herman Ruth. The Babe? The Colossus of Clout? The Sultan of Swat? The Sultan of Swat? The Great Bambino? The Great Bambino. The Babe is the owner of the most home runs in the history of baseball. I'm not lying when I say he is the greatest ever. None of these so-called superstars you youngins worship Mike Trout, Chris Bryant, and Bryce Harper wouldn't stand a chance against a trio of Gehrig, Hornsby, and the Babe. Well, besides the players, what makes the 20s so great? Goodness, boy. Have you always been such a darn fool? The first reason was the spread of radios. For the first time ever, radios were available to the everyday person. They were mass-produced and spread across the country. Families in the Midwest and Mideast finally had access to games. The second reason was the old paper. Newspapers came up with the great idea of a sports section to tell about games. They focused on everybody's favorite sport, too. The third reason was the stability of the league. Before this time, fans were constantly worried that their favorite teams would either move locations or cease to exist altogether. The teams during this period remained where they were, 
allowing fans to fall in love with their local organizations. Hey, Grandpa, I'm bored of this history lesson. And I'm tired of watching you strike out every day. Now stop being thick and pay attention. Now, where was I? Reason four. Yes, reason number four. Four. Back before the 20s, the center of the ball was made of a wound center. This made hitting harder than wrestling an oiled pig in the mud on a hot summer day. During the 20s, they introduced a new and improved ball with a cork center. This caused the focus of the game to shift to hitting over pitching and defense. About the same time, the Negro Leagues were established. The MLB still wasn't allowing African Americans to play, so there were leagues created to allow them to play. It was created by a man by the name of Rube Foster and featured some of the greatest talents baseball has ever seen. Reason six was the stadiums. When the decade started, baseball was coming off its greatest scandal. Within 10 years, the babe changed the game into the sport it is today. The stadiums were built large enough to keep the ball in, but still able to hit home runs. All of the parks besides Wrigley and Fenway are gone, but they lasted longer than any before them. So pretty much baseball in the 20s was a turning point for the game. It's about time you kids caught on. Time to play some ball. Let's go get some pop instead.